Brothers and sisters, 40 is a fixed number in Scripture. Uh, let, me, let, let, me, let me move on lest I bore you. This one scripture contains 40 words. For, for you to be able to digest uh, this little Easter speech that I'm going to give you, we first need to cut it up so that you can swallow it. Brothers and sisters, 40 stands for trials and probation. Anytime you see the number 40, that's what it means. It's, it, in the Bible, it stands for trials and tribulation. And Jordan, thank you. Uh, Jordan comes down every uh, night from work, uh, and he asks me, how is the message, the sermon going? And uh, I thank you uh, for that, Jordan. But when I dissect it, this text, I came up with several P's, the letter P. When I dissect, I ain't going to be before you long. I'm, I'm truly almost done. I just wanted to give you part one of this text. Um, when I dissected it, minister, uh, uh, I came up with several P's. Or I came up with several uh, letter P. Our text said, uh, he starts off by saying, if there's possibilities. My people, that's personal. I done already gave it, gave y'all, uh, uh, the, the, I came up with several P's. Minister Cage uh, he starts off, I'll say it again, he starts by saying, if that's possibilities. My people, that's personal, which are called by my name, that's paternal, shall humble themselves, that's preparation. And pray, that's power. And seek my face, that's a privilege. Turn from their wicked ways, that's procedure. Then will I hear from heaven, that's progress. And forgive them of their sins, that's pardon and heal their land. That's prosperity. Can I say that again? For those of you that are writing it down, and I know y'all said, Pastor, that you just moving too fast. I don't want to bore you, so I don't want to be up here too long. If you if you need to, you can just tune in, uh, listen to the broadcast uh, a little later, and write down all the P's. He started off by saying, if. What is that? Possibilities. My people, what is that? That's personal. Which are called by my name. That's paternal. Shall humble themselves. That's preparation. And pray. That's power. And seek my face. How many know that's a privilege? Turn from their wicked ways. That's procedure. Then will I hear from heaven. That's progress. And forgive them of their sins. That's pardon. And heal their land. That's prosperity. Brothers and sisters, he starts off by saying, if. If, brothers and sisters, if you remember, uh, if you like me, it's been a long time since you've been in school. If, the word if, that's a conjunction. But 
It is a uh, conditioning conjunction. It is a conditional uh, conjunction. Each brothers and sisters conjunction does different things. There are several uh, conjunctions that we use regularly. The word, can I give you another uh, word? Uh, the word but. Ooh, I, I told you I had to dissect it. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, the word but is a contrast conjunction that means the sentence that starts flowing one way and when you get to the word but, it goes another. Come on, somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Uh, let, 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 me, let me calm down. Let me give you some Bible before you, I sound or you start listening to me as if I'm speaking Chinese. <laughs> Romans 6, 23. 3, 6 and 23 says the wages of sin is death. Watch the shift. Watch, watch. But it's getting ready to go another way. The gift of God is eternal life. There's another word that we use regularly uh, that is a conjunction. The word and. A-N-D. Uh, amen, Sister Jackie. Uh, the word and is a conjunction. But watch this, Deacon. Uh, but it's a connecting conjunction. Uh, in other words, it connects what just happened to what's getting ready to happen. Woo! Preach, Pastor. Teach us. Uh, uh, the word and, A-N-D, is a conjunction, uh, uh, but it is a connecting conjunction. It, it connects what has, has hap just happened uh, to what's getting ready to happen. Uh, most time in scriptures, uh, uh, help me minister, uh, uh, most time in scripture the word and connects a promise to a principle. Most time uh, the word and connects a promise to a principle. Uh, how many know, brothers and sisters, we love the promise, but we ignore the principle. <laughs> Hallelujah. We love the promise. Somebody tell uh, text, uh, amen, amen in the comment section. Uh, 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 we love the promise, but we ignore the principle. The, another word uh, that is a conjunction is the word therefore. The word therefore is a conjunction. But watch this lady. Uh, uh, this is for you. You didn't, you didn't help me with this part right here. Uh, uh, but I had to Google it. Uh, the word therefore, Deacon Harris, is a conjunction. But to understand it, you have to back up prior to the therefore to see what the therefore is there for. Hallelujah. Yeah, let, can I, can, amen, let, 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 let me say that, let me say that again. Uh, the word therefore is a conjunction, but in order to understand it, you have to back up prior to the therefore to see what the therefore is there for. The little word if, brothers and sisters, whether you know it or not, uh, the little word if follows you everywhere you go. Pastor, how, 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 how can uh, the word uh, if follow me everywhere I go? Amen. If you put up the word if, a uh, life, brothers and sisters, the little word if follows you everywhere you go. It's sandwiched in the word life. Uh, you spell life L-I-F-E, but if you drop the L, and drop the E, life is sandwiched in the middle. If is, is sandwiched in the middle. Now I understand, brothers and sisters, when, when Grandma and them, uh, when they say, I'll see you next Sunday, if it is the Lord's will. <laughs> 
preach, pastor, teach us. Let, 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 me, give you, let me give you some uh, Bible before you, I sound like or you just start listening like I'm speaking Chinese. Brothers and sisters, Matthew 16, 24. And if you will, if you will, to let me know that you got it, just say if every time you hear me say if. Matthew 16, 24. Yeah, you can lead that life up there moving like that. Amen. Amen. There's an if in our everyday life. Uh, Matthew 16, 24, Jesus says, if, somebody say if, any man will come after, uh, if, if any man will come after me, first let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. You didn't get that one? John 12, 22 says, if, Somebody say, if I be lifted from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. John, since you didn't get that one, John 15, 7 said, if, somebody say, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask what you will that it shall be given unto you. You didn't get that one either. Romans chapter 10, number 9 says that if, Somebody say, if thy confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You didn't get that one? Second Corinthians 5 and 1 said, and we know that if, somebody say, if, if this earthly house of this tabernacle would dissolve, we have another building. Uh, uh, not made by the hands of man, but made by God. Say, hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, if, somebody say if, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed, passed away. Behold, all things become new. You didn't get that one either. Galatians 6 and 1 said, brethren, if, somebody say if, a man be overtaken in a fault, Ye which are spiritual, restore such one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself less thou also be tempted. You didn't get that one either. Galatians 6 and 3 says, if, somebody say if, a man think himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. Uh, you didn't get that one either. Galatians 6 and 9 says, uh, let us not be worried in well-doing, for we shall reap if. Somebody say, if we faint not. You didn't get that one either. First John 1 and 8 says, if, somebody say, it's if. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. First John 1 and 9 says, if, somebody say, if, we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. You didn't get that one? 1 John 1 and 10 says, if, somebody say if, we say we have not sinned, we make him a lie. 1 John 2 and 1 says, these things write on you that you see not, but if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus Christ, the righteous. You didn't get that one either. Revelation 3, 20 says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If, somebody say if, any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come in with him and sup with him and he with me. Brothers and sisters, our text starts off with a very important word, and that word is if. Hallelujah. But then watch this. He didn't stop there. He said, my people. At that point right there, he made it personal. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm afraid we are looking for answers in the wrong place. I remember uh, uh, say, saying a couple of Sundays ago, we are looking for the right things. I think I preached that. We are looking for the right things, but in the wrong place. Brothers and sisters, in the day and time we're looking for, uh, we are living in now, uh, we are looking for answers. In the wrong places. We're looking, we're looking for answers uh, uh, when we look at a president or a senator or uh, Republicans and Democrats, uh, Congress and mayors and governors. Uh, we look to them to set things in order. But I'm just afraid, brothers and sisters, that we're looking for the answers in all the wrong places. 
Watch this. God did not give that to them. Hey, God did not give all that power to them. Brothers and sisters, I remember reading that in the Bible where it says God is a jealous God. And we dictate, uh, 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 dictate a lot as to how God acts. <laughs> if you pause and look at the scripture, whenever brothers and sisters, watch this. And, 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 and I had to just thank God for this. Watch this. There's nothing new under the sun which is leading me up to what I'm getting ready to say. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters, if you pause and look at the scriptures, whenever the people of God start rebelling against God and start doing what they want to do, like disobeying God, God does four things. I didn't, I didn't, I, 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 I didn't put it in points, uh, but God does, I did, okay, God does four things when, when, amen, amen, God does four things. If you look at scripture and whenever the people of God start rebelling against God and start doing whatever they want to do. They're not reading the word. They're not, they not coming to church. They are not, uh, they are not uh, in Bible study. They are not in Sunday school. When people start doing their own thing, God does four things. Brothers and sisters, and if you don't believe me, read your Bible or look at CNN. If you pause and look at the scripture, Whenever people start going against what God has in his word or what God has said, he does four things and then I'm done. I'm going to finish breaking down. Me and minister going to finish breaking down that on next Sunday. When the world, when the universe stop obeying God and start rebelling against God, uh, start doing their own thing. When they refuse to turn from their wicked ways, God does four things. The first thing that God does, God will always put a wicked king on the throne. Hallelujah, I felt that. God will always put a wicked king on the throne. I need some Bible readers or I need some news watchers. <laughs> mm. Can I give you number two? When people turn, uh, choose to stay in their wicked ways and go against God's word and, and, and stop obeying God, God will always sin a disease, a virus, or a plague in the land. I'm all up in the scripture. I'm all up in today's world. We have come to the conclusion, uh, Sister Matthew, that uh, COVID, is, COVID ain't left. It's still here, and the numbers are getting higher. Whenever people refuse to turn from their wicked ways and seek his face, God would put a king, a bad king, on the throne. God will uh, put a, 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 a disease, a virus, a plague in the land. The third thing that God would do when, when, when people, uh, people of God's uh, start ignoring him. God would always send a prophet to town. When man, when 
when people of God, when, okay, let me break it down a little quick, better than that. When church folk start leaning to their own understanding, refuse to turn from their wicked ways, refuse to seek his face, God will always do number four and final. God will always send his word. Brothers and sisters, God is not looking for them to get things in order. Because our text said, if my people. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, that's it right there. I could, I could go ahead and have a seat right there. He, he, he did not give that authority to, authority to uh, the president or the senator or the Republicans or Democrat, mayor, governors. Uh, he didn't give that authority to them. He said, if my people, that lets me know that there are some Christians, some believers that refuse to turn from their wicked ways. Pastor, it got me this for Amen. Brothers and sisters, that's what, again why he said in our text, if my people, brothers and sisters, you must remember that God has invested so much in his people. Don't you know God could have ended this a long time ago? But he, what did, what, what, what did Pastor just say a moment ago? He said, he said one of the things that he will always do, he'll always send a word. And his word this morning is, if my people. That's, what, that's, that's the problem. We're not hearing it. We heard it. We're not receiving it. We're not living it. He said, if my people, not the, if the president, not if the governor. He said, if my people. God has invested so much into us. Brothers and sisters, I discovered, uh, uh, and, and, and I knew this, but I discovered last week in typing this, uh, we have not been redeemed. Uh, uh, we've been redeemed, I'm sorry. God didn't save us for us to do nothing. God didn't need no brownie points. He didn't, he didn't need to score points or, or, or he, he did not save us from where we used to be for us to just do nothing. God, uh, uh, you didn't get that one. God did not bring us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's our testimony. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Woo! He didn't do that just to brag about how holy you are. I preached this some, uh, some weeks ago. God has put something on the inside of us. Okay, uh, the, the, the scripture somewhere in the Bible says we are a set aside people. Although we, 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 we used to be in the world, we're not up in the world anymore. We may be other, we ain't in the world no more. So brothers and sisters, God has put something in his people. That's who he's holding accountable. The president is going to do what the president is going to do. Governors, Congress, all of them going to do what they do. He said if my people. <laughs> okay, let me give you some Bibles before you start looking at me like I'm speaking Chinese and I'm done. Matthew 28, 18 says, Then Jesus came, watch this, to them and said, All authority. He didn't say, he didn't say it was in Congress. He didn't say it was in the Democrat. He said, All authority, all power. In heaven and on earth has been given to me. And that's with a capital M. You didn't get that one? Acts 1 and 8 says, you shall receive power. 
I'm going somewhere. We just learned that, that God said all power, all authority has been given to me. And then we turn around and learn that uh, he said that you shall receive power. We're talking about his children, uh, uh, the anointed one, the, the God-fearing people shall receive power. Watch this. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Okay, so now he already told us that he got authority and all power, and then he lets us know, I'm going somewhere with this, he has let us, he lets us know that we have power. Now he's telling us, be strong in the Lord. And then one more. Matthew 16, 18 said, upon this rock, I build, he didn't say the White House, he didn't say Capitol Hill. He said, I build my church. So now, what did I just say? God gets his authority, place it behind the church, and he gets his power and put in the church. Ah. <sighs> I just told you, he said that I have all authority, I have all power. And then I turned around and said that he has given you, us, power, his children, power. Uh, what was the other one? What was the other one? Uh, he said, he said be, finally, be strong in the Lord. And then he said, upon this rock, I build my church. So he's saying God gets the authority, he said, I get the authority and I place it behind his church and get his power. He gives his power to the church. That's why I said before, God has put something. Okay, who's the church? Thank you. Okay, so God has put something in you. He said, upon this rock, he said, I build you. I have the authority, but I've given you some power. So he tell you to be strong in me. And then he says, upon this rock, I build you. Can I say it again? Matthew 28, 18 said, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority. Acts 1 and 8 says, you shall receive power. Ephesians 6 and 10 said, finally be strong in the Lord. Matthew 16 and 8 said, upon this rock, I build my church. Jesus gets his authority, places behind his church, and take his power and put it in the church. And uh, the rest of that scripture says, and tell the church to cease opportunities which are before the church. Mm, what does that mean? Ecclesiastes says it better, 9 and 10. It says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. If my people, y'all, come on, I'm just connecting the dots. I'm just connecting the dots. I'm just connecting the dots. He done told us that, reminded us that he got all power. I'm giving you some of that power. So be strong. And use this, he said, he said, upon this rock, I build you. So use this to seize the opportunities that's going to come before you. And then Ecclesiastes says, uh, whatever your hands find to do, do it with your might. Brothers and sisters, what the, the writer encourages us to seize every opportunity that comes our way and put forth our best if my people, brothers and sisters, we should approach each uh, vision, each uh, uh, assignment, uh, no matter how big it is or how small it is, we should approach it with enthusiasm. Our scripture says, if my people if God's people will remember, here it is. This is the Rickyology's uh, translation. This is Ricky's translation, and then I'm done. Ricky's translation said, if God's people 
would remember who he is and who, what he has placed in us and pray. Turn from your old ways to God's ways. Then I will heal your land. Your land. Your temple. He ain't talking about, he ain't talking about uh, uh, out here in the world. He said, I will heal your land. In other words, I will heal you of whatever you're going through. In Jesus' name, amen.